Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sipniewski, and thank you so much for popping by my channel. So if you're like me and consume a lot of YouTube, you've probably run into a commercial that goes a little something like this. Color grading is hard. Color correction is even harder. And that's why we've developed our own set of presets prospectively specifically for Luma. You you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure you guys have seen that commercial. I've seen it probably at least a hundred times. I think the company's name is Cinema Vlog Secrets, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, I purchased their preset packs and uh, I... Mm, so I'm not really sure if I'm happy with the purchase because right now I only have the one camera that I shoot with and use. They do have a lot of different options in there when it comes to cameras. So Let's swing over to the B camera. Let me drop in some footage that I've color graded and color corrected. And then I'm going to drop in that same clip and add the color correction that they recommend for my specific camera. So let's go ahead over to the B camera and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now this is just a video clip of some footage that I took at the park that's pretty close to my house. And I was, I took this at golden hour. It was a very pretty scene. I have already color corrected and color graded this particular footage. And I'm just going to play a little bit of it just so that you can see it. I really could put that in slow motion and it would be even more cinematic and dramatic, but that's not the point of this video. Here's the next video. Now this is the video that I shot in its raw form. So what I want to do is show you the difference between the cinema, I think it's Cine Vlog Secrets, I think that's the name of it. So let's go ahead and show you the difference from what they suggest for my footage and what I've actually done to my own footage. So I'm going to double click on that and that is going to bring us to the properties window of that particular video clip. Now being that these are saved as presets, you wouldn't go to where you normally go if you're dropping in LUTs. If you want to drop in a LUT, you'd have to go to the cube little icon. And that's because whenever you're using a LUT in LumaFusion, it's always going to have that dot cube format. This is going to be saved under the presets, which don't forget is the star. So let's go over to the star. And this is going to be all of the options that came with the Cinema Vlogs little preset pack. So my camera just happens to be the very first one that's at the very top. I shoot with a Canon camera, so right here, this is Canon CineStyle, and I do shoot in CineStyle. So all we'd have to do is just hit that, and that is going to drop what they recommend for a color correction over my footage. Now, this is not like a LUT. So you can see if you go into edit your own video clip and you go to where that little paint palette is, you hit that, you hit original, all of this is immediately going to drop down. These are all things that you can do in LumaFusion as well. This is basically what they've done. They've just taken the little sliders in LumaFusion and they've just moved and tweaked them just a little bit. So let's back out of this. So once again, I'm going to show you my footage. And then right on top is going to be the footage that they recommend. Right off the bat, theirs is looking to me to be a little more muted and a little darker. So I've added probably, you know, more vibrance to this clip than they did. So let's go ahead and look at my sliders. And oh, also I've added sharpness to this video. And just just a little teeny tiny little bit of sharpness because Obviously, in my camera, I dial down the saturation, the color tone, and the sharpness. Because sometimes when you have sharpness in camera, it just looks digitalized and looks comic booky. And if you're not careful with using the sharpness in LumaFusion as well, that can happen too. You don't want to have your sharpness pulled way up here. See how that just kind of ruins the shot? You just want it pulled down ever a little bit so slightly so that it just looks nice. So let me go ahead, I'll hit original. Now this is the settings that I picked for this particular clip. And my saturation is going to be up to be 1.15. 
My contrast is at a 17 and my vibrance is at a 21. So their vibrance was pulled way, way down. I think it was 0.01. So let's see. If, so see how mine basically matches theirs if I just tweak down the vibrance just a little bit. I like the vibrance to be up there because I it was a very beautiful day and the greens were very green that day. And this this has a little more of a darker look to it. I'm not saying it's bad. You know, if you're someone that needs help with color correction, this might be a good option for you. But let's go ahead. I'm going to double click and get into the properties window again. Let's go back into the preset window and just check out some of the other options that they have. So if you have an Osmo action camera, they have a preset for you. If you have a GoPro, they have some for you. If you shoot Sony S-Log, they have some presets for you. The Mavic, the Phantom, all of these things, they have presets for your particular camera. You can just drop that preset on there and you're not going to have to do much as far as correction goes. You might want to tweak it a little bit to get it to be where you like, but they also have some other things down here. So let's go ahead and see some of the other things that they have. This says Instagreen Effect Preset. So let's go ahead and hit that and see what that's about. So that almost takes my footage and makes it look like it's set in fall time. Like the coloring is completely different than it was that day. And it looks like they also drop a vignette on there. And it looks like they leave my original color correction. Then this is a LUT. Okay, you can always dial down LUTs too. You can pull down the intensity of a LUT or bring it up high. Okay, so there's a mixture of color correction and LUTs mixed in together here. So let's go ahead and choose something else. Let's choose, what is this, Western? Let's see what that looks like. I don't really see that much of a difference with that one. So let's choose something, Nightlight. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, I guess so that just makes it look like it could have been shot later at nighttime, like it did darken it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and just, okay, so let's look at the teal and orange effect or aqua and teal, they say. Once again, it's going to make it look like it was shot in autumn. There's a, it brings out the golds a lot. Let's see what else they have. Cinematic blend. So let's see what that looks like. Now is that yeah, that is a lot. Okay, so. Once again, so it just looks to me like they're adding different variations of gold into their presets. So I, you know, I guess it would have to depend on how comfortable you are with color correcting if you're not satisfied with your skills and you just want a little bit of extra help or if you just even want to make editing simpler and easier for yourself and instead of going in and tweaking your own color correction I mean you know I guess it could be easy to just hit something that they have and then go in and tweak it from there film recovery I wonder what that's about define now what what is that about this is the Phantom, the Mavic, let's hit the Phantom. Why is the Phantom so dark? Sony S-Log, that's dark as well. well. Let's go back to my camera, okay. And let's get rid of this Define one. And they also have these different colors that they dropped in here. So let's say that you want to go and make uh, an intro for your channel and you want to have some of the footage to look like a slash green, a slash purple, a slash red. You definitely can do it that way. I don't necessarily know if that would be different than something just went out. Oh, my hair light went out. That's okay. You know, then over here, is it much different than what you would get over here? They do have a lot of different options. So if you want to go with something that's just, you know, easy to do, if you're not 
confident in your color correction skills and you just wanted to use something that was muted, I guess, or pressed for time, if you know, that's that's totally up to you. Uh, this one's not too bad. What is this one? Night light orange teal. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so I mean, that's that's basically it. I've seen a commercial now that they're going to be selling uh, presets of transitions. So I think probably what I'm going to do tomorrow is teach you guys how to do transitions because it's the easiest thing to do in the world to make your own transition. So I think I paid in the area of 20 or $25 for that preset pack. I just wanted to have it. I just wanted to see what it looked like and to see if there was going to be something in there that was useful for me. I didn't really see anything that was that I could use yet. Oh, along with that, they also give you uh, crop bars, a lot of different thicknesses to the crop bars. If you add those crop bars, it should make your footage look a little more cinematic. I don't necessarily believe that. I, I just don't. I think it just winds up cutting off a lot of your footage. If you went and filmed a beautiful scene, it's going to cut out some of that scene. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend using the crop bars. You know, especially if people are watching YouTube on on their phones, you know, it's already such a small space where they're viewing that having that cut off, I, I just wouldn't recommend using that for YouTube. If you're doing something where, you know, you're making a video for someone's wedding or a communion or a party where they've hired you to film it and make a video, then that could be interesting to add those crop bars to that. But I think for YouTube, a lot of people watch it on their mobile units, like their iPads or their phones. And you know that that screen is already so small. Now you're going to cut off even more of that screen by adding crop bars. So it's one of those things where your own personal preference is really going to have to kick in and you're going to decide whether or not those crop bars are for your type of video. Well, that's going to do it here tonight for me. And don't forget tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow, we are going to get into the transitions in LumaFusion. I thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, wear your sunblock.